and you have an extra parameter. This is routinely probable today. Uh, but uh, this body has no three parameters. Uh, so one of the ways is to find a more general one that has a parameter and then specialize it. That's one of the things. So one way of strategy is to search for more general identities and that's a specialization of something that WC can do. But as of today, nobody. That's an art, not a science yet. Yeah, yeah, good point. It's hypergeometric, but no extra parameters. Yeah. So why why is 128 over pi so special? Why not is 199 over pi cube? Just I don't know. Were they working backwards? What? Were they working from the series to this or? Oh no no it doesn't mean that's how you work. Oh no no that means I mean eight is big thing. Oh yeah for this one? Yeah for the first. Yeah for this one yes. For the first one I don't know. No, probably yes. I am not sure. Either way, I mean, uh, this is uses so-called PSIQ algorithm. It's an empirical algorithm. So it has a certain format of current identities. So you experiment what to get, and then empirically he finds it, and then he checks it for many, many digits and makes a conjecture. So it's from the series that they're getting these numbers, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly how. This is a complete art, how they discover this empirically. And, and, and sometimes they discover it empirically, and then they have rigorous proofs later on. So this is one of the things that are still open. Another famous formula for pi is in the t-shirt here, is order. The first Efficient computation. The first infinite series for pi, as I'm sure all of you know, or at least most of you, is goes back to Gregory and to Leibniz. It's a beautiful, beautiful formula, but it's completely useless for computing pi. As you know from calculus 2, the error in truncating is an item in series is this. <coughs> so to get 10 digits, to get error of 10 to the minus 10, you have to go roughly uh, uh, 10 to the power 10 terms, which is very, very inefficient. And very soon Euler uh, and his contemporary realizes. Even Newton, uh, he used uh, something better. So, basically what we have here is an arc time, arc tangent of one. So as I'm sure you know, the arc tangent of x is a very nice infinite series, x minus x cubed over 3. So if x is less than 1, it can go this much faster. The case of convergence is one, so one is a borderline case. And so, so if you can find a better way of expressing power of four, eight, ten, either one, you can produce it too. So, we know this probably goes back to ancient Greece. If I invent the trick, the rule of the distance of tangents. I think it goes back to Alexandria. There's some version of it at least. Tangent of x plus y, or rather of alpha plus beta, is tangent alpha, plus tangent beta, over y minus tangent alpha, tangent beta. And I used to love this formula so much. Yeah. When I went to elementary school in Israel, uh, I only liked, I, I didn't like any subject. Math was too easy because I knew more than the teacher and all the other subjects, the most interesting. So uh, luckily the notebooks, uh, the, uh, the, the notebook we used had uh, formulas 
all the trick formulas in the back. So I got bored in the other subjects, so I was just reading all them. So I know these formulas very well, all the additional ones. So now if you write tangent alpha equals x, and tangent beta equals y, you have a nice, beautiful formula that inverse tangent so sorry, yeah, of x plus inverse tangent of y equals inverse tangent of x plus y over y minus x y. So this is a beautiful trick that Euler and his contemporary uh, machine used to great advantage to compute pi to many, many digits. Much more efficiently than Archimedes, for example. By the way, Archimedes was a pioneer in computing a pi. But he didn't really know this formula, so he didn't go very far. But he was a smart guy. So using this, the inverse tangent of one half plus the inverse tangent of one third is the inverse tangent of one half plus one third over one minus one half. This is one over one, fifth, yeah, one, five or six or five or six. So power of four, so instead of one infinite series, you have two one. But both of them convert much faster. Now, this series, the arrow is much smaller. So that was the first trick. But then why stop here? And famously, in 1707, I think, some guy called Machen, or oh, I don't know how you it, found out a formula the power of 4 is 4 times inverse tangent of 1 over 5 minus inverse tangent. Both of them converge much faster still. And there are other variations. But it just occurred to me that now that we have Maple, I didn't do it yet because I was, I was hoping to do it, but I still have to do it tomorrow. Uh, you can easily write a program that generates from first principle all the machine type formula and see what's the best. Because you can easily program this operation and find out uh, integers x and y and coefficient m and n that will give you this. And, and I hope uh, to do it soon. So to my apartment, I was hoping to give you a list whether it's best possible. Maybe you can improve the file, so it's coming up. So this is a one way that you can improve. And for a long time, that's how they computed pi. All the early computations of pi by early computers uh, up to the 70s uh, was done using variations of this. Then famously, the Chudnovsky puzzle. Then they could then there were even better formulas. One by Ramanujan, that like most of Ramanujan things was officially only conjectured, but then the Bowman brothers, I think, proved it rigorously. And a competing formula is a little bit better by the legendary Trudnovsky brothers. And David and Gregory. They had an amazing formula, you can look it up on the internet. And they used the home computer to get a record of computing pi. So that was the next uh, step. And then using WZ, some other formulas uh, came later on. But all these formulas require that to find, for example, the 10 billions digit, you need to know everything. Suppose you're trying to know the, I don't know, Google digit of pi in base 10. 
It's on the output. It's very. There's no way you can find all the first Google. There's not enough room in the world to find all pi to that many. Uh, that to Google, not Google, Google. Uh, to Google number of digits. There's not enough room for that in the whole universe. But if you believe that uh, Google is less than infinity, is a concrete number integer from zero to nine. That is this. Can you find it? And that's still a big open problem in base 10. But the famous, about uh, 15 years ago, Bowen, Bailey, and Plouffe found an amazing formula that answers this question in base 2. In fact, base 16. But once you have it in base 16, you also have it in base 2. And here is the famous PPP formula. I'm sure you can. It's so famous, it's in this t shirt right here. By the way, today is Albert's birthday, and Albert also used a pi. In this t shirt, you have the general relativity equation somewhere. Yeah, here. So if you see lots of pi's, show up here. And also, my sense formula is here. So, it's a nice t shirt. So, here is the famous BPP. <coughs> It's a big breakthrough because it enables you to compute any desired digit without bothering. So you don't care about it. You were invited to have coffee with the 10 zillion digit of pi in base 16. And you want to find out whether you like it or not. What is it? <laughs> you don't want to bother computing everything up to it. You want to, as fast as possible, find out. So it's an amazingly simple formula. 1 over 6 to the power i, 4 over 8, i plus 1, minus 2 over 8i plus 4, minus 1 over 8i plus 5, minus 1 over 8i plus 6. And you wake up the program in the computer and it doesn't convert as fast as the other ones. It's like roughly 1 over 16. So it doesn't compete as far with the Gilera formula, for example. Uh, it just gives you one digit roughly. Uh, it gives you one digit in uh, base 16, roughly, for every one. So it's not as good. But still, uh, it's not bad. And this was discovered empirically. Once again, using the LP, uh, whatever it's called. What is it called? PSLP, yeah. P. Due to the sculpture, uh, help, help, help us something. So it was discovered empirically. But once it was discovered empirically by using an uh, integer, uh, also another competing thing is the L LLL algorithm. Something called LLM. Lenstra, Lovach, somebody. Yeah, Lenstra, Lovach, Lenstra. Uh, so you can discover these things empirically. But once discovered, it's a triple exercise from me first. And I'll leave it to you. I'll give you a hint. Uh, you can express it as a certain integral from 0 to 1 of some rational function. For some polynomial. That's a hint. In fact, if I had 20 minutes, I can do it without maple. Use partial fractions. Uh, okay, 20 minutes, I'm sorry. If I had 40 minutes, I can do it without maple. But uh, maybe I can do it in one second. So this is... Um, and this is often the case, not always, that a formula discovered empirically is very, very important. But once it's bizarre, uh, the proof is trivial, without even it less interesting. So discovering these formulas is uh, also a nice spot. And I think once again, with systematic charge using symbolic computations, you can possibly discover 
other form of access. And finally, let me conclude with my favorite interpretation of pi, my favorite definition of pi. The definition of pi being the ratio of the circumference to the diameter, I don't like. It's too geometrical. The definition uh, that is the normalizing things in the normal distribution, I like better. But still, this continues. An even better one from a discretion point of view is the following one. If you look, if you toss a coin n times, two n times, sorry, what's the probability or what's the number? What's the number of ways in which you break even? Let's put it here. Okay. So if you look at the probability, it's roughly, so you can define as a limit okay, of this. But still, two probability. And also the concurrence is very, very slow. There's a much, much better way to define pi combinatorially. Also, the slowest way of computing pi if you do it from scratch. Of course, we have to speed up. Famously, one way to compute pi was due to a French count called Buffon, one of the greatest scientists in the world. So he had a needle, he threw it. And then he counted, he did it three, four thousand times. He counted how many times it landed here or here, and then the ratio. So that's the first use, maybe, of Monte Carlo simulations to compute pi. He, he was a little bit of a cheater uh, because he knew the answer already. So he stopped when he was a good fit. Uh, but uh, still, it was pretty good. The idea was good. But here is a, even a way, I don't have time, but let me just. A permutation is called zigzag or up down. If it goes up, then down, then up, then down, and so on. A French mathematician from 19th century called André proved that if capital A of N is the number of up-down permutations, then the limit as n goes to infinity of 2n times a of n of a of n minus 1, sorry, the right one, minus 1 of a n, is exactly pi. So this is my favorite definition of pi. It's a combinatorial definition of pi. And you want to compute pi very, very slowly, you first generate all the permutations of length n, n factor of them. Then for each of them, you have a computer program that checks whether it's up or down. For example, 1, 2, 3, 1, 3, 2, 2, 1, 3, 2, 3, 1, 3, 1, 2, 3, 2, 1. This is not up down. This is, this is not, this is, this is not. So you get two, so you get a of three equals two. And a of two equals one. So if n equals three, it's two times three, and times two over three, four. So pi equals four if n equals three. If n equals 4, you get 3. Maybe that's why the Bible likes 3 is 5. And but if you keep going, you get better and better and better closer approximations to pi. So this is my favorite, uh, from now on, definition of pi. Forget about the ratio of the circumference uh, to the diameter or any other one. 
this is from now on the definition of pi, and that's why pi is more fundamental than tau. If anything, pi over 2 should be from now on the fundamental object. Because if we take it to here, but let's keep tradition and keep it here. Thank you for coming. We have to ask the questions in private, and, uh, and I hope you can come uh, in two weeks. Uh,